we're totally going to see an era where every quarterback's going to put themselves in the portal until they know what the heck the answer is. These coaches are having it all their way. So we've still got a battle. We've got a decision to make. You don't have to leave. You can stay right there, but you're going to, you're, you have now the option. If you get what you think is a bad decision to go someplace else. All right. Welcome in. That was a uh, former Colorado, what UCLA coach player, uh, Rick Neuheisel on Sirius XM talking about that transfer portal and uh, welcome in on a Thursday base and blue review. It's time to talk with uh, Jim Scarcelli who joins us here every Thursday, the former Wolverine scar. Nice to see you. How are you? Hey, things are good, Danny. Let me just comment real quick about that. You know, that's what most coaches will do throughout the summer. They will, and throughout the spring, they'll say, you know, we got two guys competing and I'll make my decision. And then they make it late so the kid can't go anywhere. So that's the point he was trying to make there. But, you know, sometimes the answer to that problem might be, hey, guys, I'm going to play both of you. Now, is that going to cause you to lose both of them? But anyway, it's just interesting because he know, he's a former quarterback. He's a former coach. And that's kind of the narrative in the, 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 the mind game they play so they can keep two quarterbacks. But uh, Right. You know. it, it is interesting. It, they, they've got the a May 1st. They had a deadline. I don't know if that was written in stone by the NCAA and you're going to get a, a waiver and any, everything else. But what Neuheisel is saying, and you can, you can take it to other positions, it can be dangerous. Let's say, you know, you're not – you know, sure of your spot, you hit that transfer portal. I could say, Hey, we don't have a spot for you coming back. But if you're a, a top player, it may behoove you if you're in competition at a spot to say, Hey, just in case things don't work out here, you get it with a quarterback because if you're the backup, they don't plan on playing too. You might get it if you're an offensive lineman, all the other positions, they can say, Hey, we can rotate you in. Right. Yeah. So it's, you know, the coaches have to play those games. You know, I, I, I totally understand it. Uh, to, to try to, uh, you know, to, to have two good quarter. You can't be having them bail out on you. So you got to find a way to uh, to be a good diplomat. <laughs> it's uh, it's changing rapidly, and it may have changed more uh, this past year than it's changed uh, in the past 25 years. Well, we're going to be talking about Big Ten offensive systems. Uh, Scar is going to rank these, these systems. That's going to be one thing that we do here on Maze and Blue Review. We'll also have a uh, Buckeye breakdown, as far as Big Ten rankings of offensive systems. Uh, that's going to be exciting. We're going to get to that uh, straight ahead. Before we do that, we want to tell you about our new sponsor and support for Maze and Blue Review. is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Their products are precision-engineered tools. Manscaped's performance package, the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Join me, Scar, and over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code TMBR. We want to congratulate all seniors out there, whether it's high school or college. What a great gift, the performance package, the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Uh, give them a little cash and give them the, the hygiene bundle for Manscaped. And you get 20% off with free shipping with the code TMBR at manscaped.com. 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job at Manscaped. And, uh, you know, Scar, you got that bundle in the mail. What did you think of it? Great stuff. That's a great gift for a kid graduating from anything, boy. That's a good gift. Absolutely. And we want to welcome people in that are, uh, I, I see Isaac. On Clubhouse, anybody else, you know, if you want to use the feedback, whether you're watching on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, anything else, we put the comments up in uh, feedback in real time. Uh, we are also doing the same thing over on Clubhouse. Isaac saying uh, hello, and uh, he's saying what's going on. So, uh, hey, nice to see you, Isaac, as well. That's something that's new that we're just taking off on. Why don't you explain the offensive systems here in the Big Ten, Scar, as we kick this one off. You know, Denny, I uh, I played a, played a lot of football, and then I coached for about 25 years, and this is just stuff 
you know, I put together that I thought a good offense should have. I seen guys lose because they don't do some of these things. I've seen the real good pro. I think Michigan is hitting all of these things. But, you know, number one, you want to have your offense that can that can uh, play in windy, wet, nasty conditions. Some of these guys have they're so spread, you know, and, and if, if you don't have the ability to throw, who's going to care about your receivers in the game? You know, we've seen Ohio State get beat by Michigan State a few years ago. Michigan State in that wet, wet nasty weather. So you got to have – and I think our offense has that. I like that our – help the defense, number two down there. I think your offense should kind of help your defense, get it prepared for the things they're going to face in their league. Our offense does that. It helps us prepare for the people we're going to see in the league. Conflict. You know, put your defense – put defensive linemen in conflict – based on some of the things you run. Are you going to double team them? Are you going to trap them? Uh, are you going to reach them? Put secondary in conflict. Put a defense in conflict. Don't let them know what's happening all the time. Protect the QB. You know, I think, you know, sometimes these guys that run the heck out of their QB and then they want to whine and complain when their quarterback gets hurt. You know, well, <laughs> You know, that that's sorry, but you got to do things to protect them at times. And I, I like that Michigan, you know, we run both quarterbacks. He plays both. So we have where, you know, if one does get hurt, but you can't run the heck out of them all the time and expect to be able to go through 14, 13 games and win a championship. Exploit weaknesses. Are, you know, you got to find a way to – do they have a weak defensive lineman? Is their secondary soft? They won't tackle. Are they, you know, whatever it is they have, every every defense will, uh, every uh, defense will have some weakness, you know, weaker players, weaker something about their scheme. Try you got to be able to find it and then have the the the, the methodology to, to 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 exploit it. And then I want an offense that is physical. We can be physical if we need to be. We can be. We can play in space. And, and, and make people, if they don't have the speed to play with us, we have that capability. And it's also creative. We don't want to be so, you know, so predictable or just have so few things that we do. I like a little bit of motion and shifting. And some of those things, they, they create problems for a, a, a defense. And then unpredictable. You know, Danny, there's one more thing I, 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 I wanted to add. I did, uh, is an offense needs to be known for something. What I mean by that is, you just can't be someone who changes up every week. You know, a lot of people like to say, oh, they're so predictable. They, they only run those few for me. Well, you got to be good at something. Your, your team has to – your offensive players have to know that, look, we're going to hang our hat on something. This is what we run. We got a few plays that if they stop all of our best stuff, then you know what? We're in trouble. But you got to have a few tweaks off of um, – you know, your best stuff. Hang your head on something. One of our call, uh, uh, callers is, is indicating that. And, um, you know, be known for something. What are you? But that's – and I think Michigan hits a lot of those things. And so when, I'm, when, I, when I rank the different offenses in the Big Ten, these are, these are the things I'm going to be looking at. Yeah, well, you mentioned the Michigan State-Ohio State game. I think that was 2015. That was such a bizarre game. Michigan State had their backup quarterback. And it's not like Ohio State – you know, they had uh, Zeke freaking Elliott as their, their running back. And uh, Urban Meyer, if you take away all the stuff off the field and everything else, and you just talk about him as a, a coach, uh, he's he had a lot of success. Uh, he's a very good coach. And yet in that game right there, him going away from, from Zeke Elliott in the cold and the rain is, is still mystifying. And that was the year Michigan State. Won that game with a backup quarterback, Tyler O'Connor, I think. And, you know, that was on the road with a field goal at the end, and it, it got him into the college football playoff after they beat Iowa. Yeah, but Denny, Mark Antonio, he, he understood offensively what they had, and he was loading up and killing their run game. He, he was daring Urban Meyer to throw the ball out of those spread formations in nasty weather conditions, and they couldn't. Because it was a windy, wet, nasty day. So if you got, if you think I'm going to defend, you know, two receivers over here and two receivers over here on wet, windy days, the same way I, I am when it's perfect weather conditions, you're crazy. I'm going to load my defense up. I'm going to play a dishonest defense, exactly what D'Antonio did. So he didn't run Zeke because they were killing him because they were over, 
you know, overloading to stop the run. They were daring them to pass, and, and were, you know, that, so when I when I say your offense in, 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 in Ohio State didn't have enough two tight end, three tight end options in their offense to uh, give them the, the opportunity to run the football with those weather conditions, and Michigan State did. It was it was in their package. It's what they did. So my point is, you know, that's the point I'm trying to make there, Danny. Yeah, well, I, I'm speaking of Ohio State, continuing with them, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, them post-spring or what they did in spring. That's coming up here on uh, just Michigan Football Live. Jim Scarcelli and Dennis Fithy. And all these bulletin points that we have up there, you just think about this past year. Maybe Michigan would have won if uh, it wasn't a snowy day uh, in Ann Arbor against uh, Ohio State this past uh, November the 27th. But it was snowing. And Michigan, uh, they were hanging their hat on the run game. And it, as soon as uh, Ohio State started loading up on them, Michigan would hit them with the pass. That was unpredictable. And they were able to get some of the, the – they played physical on both sides of the ball. They were able to get some of their speed in there. And Ohio State's weakness, you pointed out after the game, that you saw some uh, – you saw just uh, technically that they weren't as sound. Maybe it was uh, a big number five that you know didn't have the knee band, wasn't playing with great leverage. And that was some where Michigan exploited that Ohio State defense. That was their weakness. Whereas you're running the ball like Michigan did, that did protect their quarterback. It did have Ohio State in conflict, and it helped the Michigan defense. I think those. Uh, I think Michigan played every one of your uh, uh, bulleted points. They all came into play. Uh, this past year in the 42-27 victory. Yeah, I, I firmly believe that. That's why I have Michigan uh, is in the top tier of the offensive systems because I, I think I think Jim Harbaugh knows what the hell he's doing uh, offensively to build a sustainable offense that can lead to championships. You know, I, I played – I think I may have shared this story. I remember one of the first times as a high school coach I defended the spread offense, and this guy was scoring 50 points a game. And I and I put my package together, and and to make a long story short, we we crushed them. They they scored at the end on my uh, it was a playoff game. I had my JV kids in there at the end, and it, it was wet, windy weather conditions that day. And after the game, we beat them like forty nine seven. After the game, the coach comes up to me and we shake hands. Yeah, he says to me, "Yeah, coach, you know it would have been a different game if it wasn't so uh, wet and windy out here." And I'm I'm, I'm looking at the guy. I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." You know, and I told my players that after the game, I said, this guy, this guy wants to blame the weather conditions. I said, that's why we run the ball. That's why we do the things we do so we can play in all weather conditions. I'm not going to tell my team, you know, hey, man, we lost because of the wind or the rain or, you know, that's BS. You know, that's terrible. I like it. I like those kind of stories. Uh, Scar, before you talk about some of the teams here, let's run through some of the feedback. The, the people have some questions uh, for you. Here is OM. Do you think Michigan football will win a national title in the next 10 years? You want to take a swing at that one? Hey, I, I think our program is, you know, our projection is is up, man. I mean, we 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 have we Jim has a great systems on both sides of the ball. We got guys that can coach on both all sides of the ball. We got we, we have the ability to recruit. You know, can we get, I do yes, I do believe Michigan has the the uh, the foundation coaching, school, NIL. We got to be there with the NIL too. We got to be hitting on all, all fronts. But I think we have the coaching in the school, you know, to give kids a great opportunity. And I think uh, Jim is, uh, he's, he's, he's got it figured out now offensively and defensively. Yeah. I think what you're saying uh, uh, has a lot of truth to it. And even being honest here, you know, over the past few years, uh, the issue, and since Harbaugh here, the, the one, uh, was the quarterbacks, and you're talking about figuring that out. That's a tough position to figure out. He did figure it out, you know, last year. Who knew out of all the different quarterbacks from uh, McCaffrey to Milton to Spate to all of them, that would be Cade McNamara would be the one. And also figuring out that the identity was going to be, hey, you know, it's not speed and space and all this. It's lining up, running the football, and, you know, both sides of the ball. Uh, and, and, you know, that worked for him. Yeah, but and now name, image, and likeness, if Michigan, who had a top 10 recruiting class this past year, if they can chip away at the Alabamas, Georgia, Clemson, Ohio State, and and succeed in name, image, and likeness and close that gap a little bit and chip away and get in there 
and get some top five classes. Well, then I think they, they check every box. So then why not? Why couldn't they win a national championship at that point? No, I, I totally agree with you, but you got to hit on all cylinders, man. You got to, you got to be able to, re, you know, recruiting is a tough game, a tough business, man. And you cannot be uh, behind in any area. You, you know, to win, you got to have great, great coaches that can recruit and great coaches that can coach. And then guys that can scheme. Yes, sir. Michigan did check all those boxes last year for the most part this year. I'm hoping they would be more diverse in their offensive attack. And we have the wide receiver tight end along with, of course, the running back. Uh, Yes, people get caught up with the running game. That's what I want JJ to start so we can use every weapon on the field, including him running, because there will be a time when team, He's absolutely right, and that's why he taught when they stack the line like they did, like they do against. That's why you got to be able to have the ability to run and throw out of every formation, you know. And and I think our, I think our offensive plan is good. If we want to play in space, we can. If we want to bring three tight ends in, we can. If we want to bring in six offensive linemen, we can. The defense has to prepare for all of that, but uh, I like the balance. I like to be able to. Uh, Run the ball in November, man, you know, and have the ability to do that. So, because I don't want to be telling my team that we lost because we didn't, I didn't have a system or a plan to prepare in wet, crummy weather. That's a terrible coach that has to say that to his team. I wanted to ask you this question. Thanks, Antoine. Antoine pointed this out about Dante Moore, who came in this past weekend, the quarterback out of Detroit in, in, what if uh, Dante said this to Michigan, Scar? Uh, hold on, we'll get to that one first. Um, what do you think U of M said to Dante Moore this weekend when Moore asked if U of M is going to run the ball like they did last year? So here you are, a pocket passer like Dante Moore. You know, you got your eyes on the NFL. You're, you know, a five-star QB, the apple of everybody's eye, and you want to throw the football and you watch Michigan last year. What do you think the uh, the brain trust there in Ann Arbor said to Dante, when he asked about uh, the offense moving forward. You know, I got to believe that professional coaches uh, look at a heck of a lot more than uh, his stats, a quarterback stats. You know, Belichick's got a guy that played in Alabama. He didn't throw it all over the place. They ran the hell out of the ball. Miami's got an Alabama guy that, uh, you know, they ran the heck out of the ball. You know, they, they, they want that guy – that can do it all, obviously throw and run and who's smart and can get them in the right, um, you know, get them in the right uh, uh, play. Um, but uh, you know what they might've done scar. They may have put your uh, points of offense up on the screen. They said, look, Dante in, in the NFL, you got to play in all weather conditions. This is going to uh, put the other team in conflict we're going to be unpredictable as soon as, you know, you were physical and running the ball. It's going to protect you. Look at uh, bulletin point number four there. And then when they're playing the run left and right, well, you know, that's when you pop them and, and take the, uh, the top off of the defense. They, I think Scar, maybe they just use your points uh, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, for the offense for Dante. You know, you know, Danny, you're absolutely right. Because, uh, if I'm a high school, if I'm a kid getting recruited as a, as a quarterback and, um, y- you know, I look at someone like, uh, um, you know, Nebraska, some, some of these schools, you know, some of these real spread guys, they run the heck out of their quarterback, you know, West Virginia, you know, these uh, Oklahoma, you know, you're going to take, there's going to be shots and hits you're going to take Michigan and Jim Harbaugh. They, they, uh, he obviously understands the uh, limiting the hits. I mean, yes, he runs JJ, and he ran uh, McNamara a few times, but you can't overdo it because that's gonna that's gonna take uh, shots on your quarterback. But those are good selling points. Good stuff. Uh, all right, you ready to take a look at the offensive systems in the Big Ten? Yeah, let's take a look and we'll uh, break them down. All right, let's talk about them. Uh, you know, how did you look at it? I, I'll put up as we uh, as we do talk here. Uh, last year, points per game in the Big Ten. You see, uh, Ohio State was number one. Michigan number two. Ohio State scoring forty five point seven points uh, per game uh, a season ago. That led the nation. Uh, there's Michigan 
at number two at 35.8. Scar, if I told you that you can just go and, and pick any of the teams that you want, if I told you that Michigan would average right around 35.8 points per game, do you, would you like that? Do you think uh, Jim Harbaugh, uh, that would be uh, a goal that he would be happy with or a number that he would be happy with? Oh, yeah, that, that's good. You know, you know something, Danny? I'm getting a little feedback. Okay, it's cleared up now. You know, you know something I didn't emphasize that should have been in my – you better secure the football. You better not have a lot of turnovers. Mm. Okay, and I, I don't know how many turnovers Ohio, Ohio State had in, um, in, in, in some of these rankings. But, yeah, M- Michigan's – if I'm a defensive football player, again, there's so many things that are, are not – you can't really see in some of those statistics. You know, are they helping your defense? Uh, by, by what they do are they uh, are they are they keeping your defense off the field are they keeping you fresh does the guy go for it on fourth down all the time I don't know but yeah Ohio State had the best players they got talent they had speed they had the greatest receiving core we've seen in the Big Ten probably ever and uh, you know yes they had great players their system is uh, has its downfalls though just like I guess got done saying with the 2005 Michigan State game but, uh, yes, I would definitely take uh, Michigan's 35-point average with all the things they do, securing the ball, not putting the defense in uh, in bad positions, not going for it on fourth down all the time. So, yeah, a lot of things that uh, we got to think about when we, when we rank these people. Yeah, well, they didn't throw many interceptions, but, you know, having the number one offense uh, is great, but – a a defense that was ranked number 59 last year that's not protecting your offense you know you, you're still out there uh, the only thing you had to do is watch the rose bowl and you think about how sustainable that is ohio state won that game it was a, um a very entertaining game but you know thinking about having a track meet and having to score like they did falling behind like they did it seemed like they lost that game probably five six times and they had to come back uh, that's uh it seems like modern football but I think they're going to try to run the ball a little bit more this year. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I do too. I think they're going to try to, they, they got to put, um, and, and I'll, I'll get into the Ohio state cause I did break it down, but Denny, I looking at my, uh, the, the things that I prioritize, I had three teams as the top, the last teams I want to defend who I think are, are doing really good things. And I had Nebraska, Purdue and Michigan, uh, Nebraska and Purdue, those guys, Scott Frost is a, he gives you problems, man. He runs his quarterback all over the place out of different formations. The running option. Now Nebraska's in the middle of the pack, okay, scorn, but uh, they're just, he's just a, he's a guy that gives you a lot of problems. The Purdue coach. Now he's in the he's in the middle there, and uh, he's a, he is a, a, a tough to figure out, tough to predict guy. He does a lot of things. I have a, a, a if. Again, when I make my rankings here, when I talk about these people, I'm, I'm talking about it regardless of talent. So I'm, I'm assuming they all have the same talent because obviously I, the last team I'd want to defend would be Ohio State if we just went by talent. But if we go by scheme and, 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 and what they run, Nebraska, Purdue, and Michigan, in my book, based on those uh, criteria I, I gave you earlier, uh, Nebraska, they, they give you problems. My next uh, four teams is Michigan State, Penn State, Rutgers, and Wisconsin. Michigan State is good. Their, their offensive coaches are good. They give you problems. They, they've got a quarterback that can run, and they do run them. Uh, they, they got good good formations. They have a run. They have a physicalness. Penn State, and, and it, you know, even though Rutgers is near the bottom uh, wins and losses, they just they have a good system, in my opinion. They run their quarterback um, in, in, they, in a lot of different situations, and, and they just – in Wisconsin with – with all the different things they do, and they are really good at a few things, I have them uh, as, as my second tier. And then my uh, third tier is Indiana, Minnesota, Illinois. And then the bottom four is Maryland, Northwestern, Iowa. And I have Ohio State. I know people get to say that's crazy, but I have Ohio State near the bottom schematically because I think they don't have the ability to run the ball out of with the different formations. I don't think they do much to help their defense. And I think that was a big reason why Michigan won uh, last year in Ann Arbor, because Ohio State's offense doesn't do enough to help their defense. I like it. Here's some of the rushing numbers from last year. You see Michigan and Wisconsin. Uh, a lot of those numbers are close, but, man, Michigan and Wisconsin, if you're going to say they're going to hang their head on something, they're going to hang their head on running the football. There it is. Uh, you look at the attempts. 
of um, that Michigan had. Minnesota tried to run it 601 times, but uh, the thing that jumps out there, a lot of things jump out. 39 touchdowns. How about a 5.2 average uh, from uh, from Michigan? Maybe Ohio State should run the ball a little bit because they had a 5.5 average when they did try to run the ball. They just didn't run it a whole lot. Yeah, that, that's that's something that is interesting. That 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 stat right there is uh, that makes you take a whole other look at things. You know, Maryland on the bottom, they're they're scoring points, but they're not controlling the ball. He's throwing a lot of interceptions. You know, so that's why those those scoring stats are kind of deceiving sometimes. You keep you probably put your defense in a lot of trouble at times. Michigan, that's what I like to see, man. I'm get, I'm, I'm I'm keeping the defense fresh. Um. Uh, you know, that there's and, and securing the football, but uh, yeah, and Nebraska, you know, they, they run the damn quarterback. And it, it, I didn't have Minnesota, maybe, maybe Minnesota is uh, PJ does some good things with his quarterback too, and he's hard to defend schematically, also. All right, uh, let's see. I was going to put the passing on numbers up there, uh, which I can do, and uh, I will by just punching it up there for us. It's going to take like 10 seconds to put the passing numbers from this past season up in the Big Ten, and here they are. And we just looked at those rushing numbers. We looked at the points per game. Uh, here are the passing numbers in the Big Ten. Let me see if I can center that out a little bit better so we can see the numbers. I'm going to make a screen a little bit smaller so we can – Take a peek. Uh, we'll take it that way. There we go. Took me a second. There are the passing numbers. You see Michigan down there at seven. Do they need to uh, – I know those numbers are small. Does Michigan need to be better than seventh? Great running attack, everything else, but do they need to be better than 228 yards per game? I, I know the stats can be deceiving. Only nine interceptions, which is good. Well, Ohio State only had eight picks last year. As, uh, as that, that, that's impressive, you know, that's impressive for Ohio State to only have eight, and that's a big, that's a big stat. Is looking at that interception line, and Michigan was really good there, but that is very impressive by Ohio State to only have eight interceptions, you know, and that's huge for Michigan there. That's why these stats aren't always, uh, you know, yeah, you're throwing it a lot, but you're turning it over a lot, and Michigan didn't didn't do it. And Ohio State, that is a great. Uh, that is a great look right there. If only have eight interceptions. There you go. And you see uh, Nebraska did have some balance that you were talking about. Uh, all right, Scar, what, what's next? Where, where, where are we headed here? Uh, talking uh, offensive systems or, do, or are we ready to? Well, we can get into the Buckeyes because I broke down the Buckeyes and talk about how they, you know, some of these uh, offensive uh you know, factors blend in, but I just looked at their spring game. I, 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 I taped it and kind of broke it down and just some of the things I'm seeing. Well, you mentioned that spring game. I think we can, and we do have the ability to play that. I want to make sure that uh, I may have, if the sound is there, I'm going to go back. I didn't check. Let's see. If the sound, is kind okay. of good on good as well. sound is there. So I need to go back here just for one second. And make sure that I click. You asked me, um, remember when you asked me to, if I could figure out how to take the volume off. And I think that I figured out how to do it, Scar. So let's just, uh, there it is. I got to click this off. Now we can put that up there and we can talk over the game just the way we want here. So there is Mr. Stroud, like we talked about. Two backup quarterbacks came in through picks because 44 touchdowns, just six INTs for the, what was he, a redshirt freshman quarterback last year, uh, C.J. Stroud. All right, we start this up, and uh, and here we are. Give us give us some of your impressions on uh, Ohio State. These are some of the highlights. This isn't the whole game, but, you know, there you see Stroud in there uh, as number seven. I mean, once again, you see that just massive offensive line. They're going to be great at protection. So that hasn't changed. Uh, and, you know, that, that's their base formation right there. So that's has its advantages in perfect weather conditions. 
I looked at the receivers, you know, and, and everybody's saying how great the receivers are, that they, they've got really good ones coming back. I don't know that they're as good, from my, in my opinion, as the guys they lost. So that was encouraging. Well, I, I think, Jack, you know, I love, you know, it sounds weird to say I love Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. I thought those guys were as good as any college wide receivers that I ever have seen. But I think in, in uh, 11, who we saw there for a second, uh, Jackson Smith, the uh, Jigba, he, I, he's might be one of, he might be the greatest wide college wide receiver. I'm talking with, with any of them. Uh, he's as good as any wide receiver that I've ever seen in college. You don't agree with that? No, he's good. I, it's hard to say the best, but I mean, I'm, they, talking, they, great. They, I'm yeah. talking great. He looks like he's great. Yeah. Well, they, they got some good ones and That's the uh, fear. it's uh you know, it's, it's an, you know, they, they, they play in space, man. This is a speed and space offense. This is everything, you know, you, you talk about. And the thing that I'm seeing, and, and I don't know that we'll, we'll, we'll be able to get into some of the rest of their uh, off uh, rest of their, their spring game, but they, uh, I saw Ohio State running some Michigan formations. Mm. Okay. I saw them running some of the stuff that Michigan did against them. So maybe those coaches aren't dumb. You know, like, like I always talk about doing things to prepare your defense. And I saw it as you as you go through this game, you, you'll see a lot of a, 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 quite a bit of two tight ends, some three tight ends. And I saw some of the same stuff on defense that Michigan did. I saw two stand-up outside backers like we like we run in our, in our four-man front. I saw some things that they hadn't done la- with the guy last year. Now they got a new defensive coordinator. So I saw things on both sides of the ball that Michigan did. So that tells me that – and I don't know that that's coincidence. I don't believe that that's coincidence. That, that tells me that these coaches are not stupid – and they're going to do things that they have to do to, uh, you know, get their team ready for the, the number one game on their schedule. Yeah, Jim Knowles is the uh, defensive coordinator that they they brought in. And, yeah, when you have the number 59th ranked defense, you better try something different. And uh, the part going back to those offensive systems, I mean, you had a running back like Travion Henderson, who we saw at number 32, not out there right now, Uh why not run him a little bit more? Why not protect your defense that way? You can have all the great wide receivers. I think they try to strike a balance there. I, I think, you know, now that you said it, it was number five last year against Michigan. You can see that, you know, he wasn't playing with great technique. He, he wasn't lined up, you know, he, he didn't kind of uh, standing upright, you know, not, not ready sometimes, you know, in tackling position. I think some of that stuff, I'm sure they could start talking about the fundamentals and technique and everything else, but uh, we'll see if the new defensive coordinator is going to be able to do that. Uh, talent everywhere, and yet uh, 59th ranked defense, they should be upset in Columbus. Yeah, and, but like I said, I, I think a lot of those those ranking problems have to do with uh, just being a spread offense. You know, I just think it, it, it hurts you. You got to do things to help your defense, man. You know, I, I, can you pause it, Danny, when, I, when when we line up here as we get through it? I want to I show you some of the different things they're doing on defense if you get to the next series. All right. Uh, Let me uh, that, that was some of the old stuff right there. Four-man front. Go ahead. Let it run. Let it run. Let it run. And um, try to pause it uh, right before the snap, right when he's under center. And we can look. Pause it right there. Well, you want, I can go back a little bit. Yeah, go back a little bit and pause it just before the snap. I want to show you some th- things that are a little just before the snap, if you can. Probably. I can probably do it. Let's see. I just want to get their alignment uh, before the snap, and I want to show you some things that I'm seeing uh, a little differently that um, – is kind of it, it, not a lot of people are doing it, but it's it's something different. It's similar to what we're doing. Pause it. Oh. Well, that was your four man front, and that's exactly what they've done in the past. Get to the next play and try to pause it pre snap. Pre snap. All right. Yeah. Now get to this next play and try to pause it right before the snap. All righty. They might be going to they might be going to commercial here. Let's no. see. Let's see. 
No, no. Okay, pause it right there. You know, you know. Anyway, and then what they're doing is they're they're, they're they, they 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 were in a four man front the play before. This time they were in a three man a three down front with one guy one of the uh, one of the uh, defensive linemen in a two point stance, which means he's gonna they're gonna drop him in coverage at times, and they've never done that before. That's one of the things Michigan has done. So I'm seeing. Uh, 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 the four-man front dropping guys like we dropped Hutchinson, like we dropped a job at one time. I'm seeing that from the Buckeyes, something they never did last year. So this is new stuff uh, that, that I'm seeing. Now, is that there, there's your there's your three down, and see how the guy at the top is in a two-point stance, right here, like uh, yeah, that guy right there. Yeah. See, th that's new, and and, and as and throughout that scrimmage, they dropped him occasionally. That's new. They were always a four-man front, guys, hands on the ground. So that's something that is going to give them the ability to drop one of their defensive linemen and maybe bring a linebacker. But it's, it's you do that to create some conflict. But also, those are things that Michigan does. You know, having two-point defensive end, two-point stance defensive ends who also drop and will rush the quarterback. So it's you know it's different, and it's something that Michigan does. Well, if you've got the ability with rush ends uh, like that, that's the name of the game, right? Michigan showed the way last year. Yeah, and, and, and you want to have guys that are big enough and good enough to rush, but also they, they drop in coverage at times because now it puts the defense in conflict. They don't know if the guy's rushing and he's dropping. Are they uh, are they bringing a linebacker? Are they bringing a, a safety? What are they doing? And just because he's, you know, it, again, it's conflict. It puts the offensive lineman in conflict. It's creative, and, and but still be sound and be good is what you want to do. Uh, maybe this is traditional. Maybe that left defensive ends off sides too. But, uh, let's... Yeah, but The guy at the top, again, he's in a two-point stance, and that's different. That's a different technique. And if the guy's in a two-point stance, that means he's, he's a potential dropper in coverage. And, and that's what I that's what I've seen as we go through this uh, as we whip through this. Now there's two of them. So pause it right there. That's the Michigan defense look right there. That's the two outside guys are in two point stances, and that's new. The Buckeyes never did that last year, and that means those guys would be. Uh, that's that's kind of the stuff I ran did as a player. Those are outside backers. They could rush or they could drop in coverage, and you can bring safeties. You can bring linebackers, and you know it, it doesn't doesn't have to be those four defensive linemen that are going to be rushing all the time. This is, so to speak, Aiden Hutchinson, and this would be David Ajabo. There you go. And that's the Michigan look. That is not what Ohio State did last year. Are they running that? So the question is, are, do, are they doing that because that's what this guy wants to do? That's what he believes in? Or are they doing it to prepare the offense for Michigan? Well, they, uh, I, I did listen to a little bit of, uh, of Ryan Day. He was asked about because they didn't do a lot of thud tackling. They did straight up. They were they were tackling. They were going and taking their guys to the ground, not the quarterback. But the, you know, he had mentioned that they have Notre Dame coming up uh, that they got to get ready for. So it was uh, more of a physical spring game rather than you know Cupcake City all the way through. So they had to. Yeah, I, I don't know how much of a ruses they uh, you you could potentially have when you got to get ready. I, I know Harbaugh during the pandemic that was one of the reasons you know he didn't want to show the McDonald defense, but you know that's you know that if people yeah. would have seen that. Although it was speculated that that was what was, was going to happen, anyways, right? Yeah, well, that's those are the decisions coaches have to make. High school too, you know, we have our scrimmage before we play our first game. College, they have the spring game; it's televised. You know, you got to decide. Do you, do you want to work on your stuff and get your kids good at it and let the opponent see it, or do you want to not work on your stuff and show them something else you're not really going to run a lot of and not be as good as it? <laughs> you know what I mean? So those are the decisions you have to make as a coach. And but uh, I would be, I'm sure Notre Dame is going to be looking at Oklahoma State. So there's your two stand up outside backers. Uh, you know, and, and that's a Michigan look right there. Versus that spread offense. Well, what did you do, Scar? I'm going to just guess without knowing what you did. I'm going to guess that you went ahead full tackle and showed them and say, "Hey, stop us." What'd you do? You're you're asking me what did I do in yeah. uh, well, the scrimmage, a scrimmage in high school is you know those are full goal scrimmages, but you have to decide if you if you want to try to 
show some things that you've been working on that you don't, you know, or and you want to rep it and get good at it, or do you want to not show it and not rep it? You know what I mean, Danny? I do. I, I feel like all coaches seem like they are are scared or I don't know, scared or reluctant to show anything that they've been working on. And yet I'm always like, you know, Michigan ran what? Um, two reverses where the wide receivers, one Eric all threw a pass in the spring game. I forgot who was the other wide out who threw the ball in the spring game to me. It's like, go ahead, you know, you know, make him work on it. If that's something you want to do, let him, yeah. let him go. Let's see it. Yeah, my, my philosophy as a coach was I was going to just show – we were going to work on it. I'd rather have them know it than our players not know how to execute it. So that was the, the choice I made as a coach, that we always ran our stuff in our scrimmage, and if, if they see it, great. And let's be good at it. Let's make the mistakes in the darn scrimmage instead of the first game. I could understand if, uh, let's say, you had a true freshman like Donovan Edwards and he was in for the spring game. Now, maybe you, you knew and, and you should know if you're scouting the opponent that Donovan Edwards can throw the football, even though he's a running back. But if, if you, uh, you know, you, if you plan on one day springing it out like in a Big Ten championship game and, you know, have him throw the transcontinental like he did to Roman Wilson, you might not want to show that in the spring game because you just might not, uh, you know, know that the guy has that kind of arm. Like if he ran in the spring game, you're like, whoa, we better pay attention, man. This guy might be able to air it out. Yeah, I, I, I like the idea that they that the defenses now have to know that Donovan Edwards can throw and he can throw well. They saw it in the bowl game, so all of them will be prepared for that. They they, they have you know they know that uh, that all can throw it, but you know Coach Moeller used to talk about chasing ghosts, you know, and, and we all prepare for things. And a team has everybody has trick plays. Everybody has plays they ran once or twice, and this and that. And, and, you know, Coach Mo would say, hey, we just can't keep chasing ghosts. We got to stop their best stuff. You know, we got to stop their best stuff. And then our, our the fundamentals of our defense will always uh, save us on trick plays and some of these things we haven't seen. So that that's how Coach Mo used to present it to the defense. But maybe this defense, the defense, if I'm an Ohio State fan, I say, well, the offense looks great. <laughs> But what about the defense? Where's the tackling here? I mean, they're supposed to be able to tackle him. He shed at least three tackles there. Well, heard. that's all good news. I like seeing it. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to give you my my overall general evaluation of Ohio State is yes, they have they have the best talent we're going to face. There's no question. They got the best talent we're going to face on both sides of the ball. But I like our chances, man. I like our chances, Denny. I like what they're doing on defense because I think we're gonna they're gonna still have trouble with the stuff we're doing, and um, you know I, I just I like it. I, I think that they, the, the offense, their offense, it, it is what it is, and, and they they spread you out and they're damn good in space. But uh, our scheme and the conflict we gave them last year was enough to get a couple stops here and there. But I really like our chances. There's nothing out there that we can't beat when I look at their spring game. Uh, tell, I don't know who this number three is, but he's a hell of a back. I mean, this looks like they're about their third string back as Travion Williams and we saw a prior, but I, you can't fake like this particular run. This is a, this guy looks like a fullback. If they show this jump cut in the backfield, I mean, they had him in the backfield. He jumped five yards. I'm going to have to play that back. I mean, this kid uh, will keep an eye out for him. Number three, how yeah, about he... a big jump cut? Boom. Missed tackle. Now it's uh Turn and chase. You like that? That's not a good. If you're in the uh, the film room and the defense, I, I think they they gave up there. They had him hemmed in, but you know, then it was a jailbreak. Well, that's one of the things you're going to see in the scouting report. A play, uh, you know, a defensive end. Of, uh, all the defensive players will see that, and they're like, "Wow, okay, I got to give this kid a little more respect." If I'm the uh, you know the perimeter defender, <laughs> and I had to defend because he he will bounce it out. He's got the ability to do it. Yeah, they. They got players, man. They got a lot of talented kids. I the, the backup quarterback actually looked uh, pretty good. I was hoping there'd be a, a good drop off, but he, you know, he looked pretty accurate. And Kyle really McCord. Is the yeah, he looked like he looked like a pretty good player. So I was, I was hoping to see a bigger drop off, Denny, but I we weren't. I wasn't seeing it. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, so we'll we'll find out if the defense maybe we'll you know you get to see them how they play against Notre Dame, but just on the spring game, you know, the defense is supposed to be ahead of the offense. You know, always hear that in the spring. The offense looks miles better uh than the defense. Poor tackling by this Ohio State defense here in yeah, uh, you know you know what I I noticed I, I saw you know, I, I think Ohio State's – I'm going to talk about their defense here for a second. I think their basic structure of their defense is designed to stop the spread offenses more than anything, which is good for Michigan. You know, they he comes from the – he comes – he's Oklahoma State. He comes from the Big 12. Everybody's spread over there. He don't have no Wisconsin or Iowa in the Big 12. So his scheme, in my opinion, is really designed to stop the spread which is good for Michigan. You know, a lot of uh, – they ran some three down, some four down. I talked about that, um, you know, and um, a lot of zone. I saw a lot of zone coverage uh, the way I was looking at them. But um, – If they if they lined up and, and left the middle open like that, am I calling an audible and, and running the ball over Zach Zinter at right guard if, if this was the alignment against Michigan? Well, that's a pretty basic uh, – yeah, see that's where well, you don't know which which some of those someone's going to be probably firing into one of those a gaps. The kid at the top, the defensive tackle over the their le, uh, Ohio State's left guard. Somebody is uh, is going to be responsible for unless it was a big passing situation. No, it was second and two. So yeah, you know those are things, but you can't always tell pre snap where they're going to slant into. You know, a guy might look like he's lined up here, and then on the snap of the ball, they both fire into the gap you thought was going to be unmanned. Yeah, it's uh, interesting how different seasons take hold. I remember a couple of years ago, Michigan was having a hard time just with your basic, uh, what are you calling, a, a twist gain or a loop, you know, like yeah. their tackles were having a hard time. Just, I know those those are difficult things to do, you know, and I know you got to work against stunts and, and twists and all that, but Michigan, uh, it was two or three years ago, they just had difficulty. You could see it all the way through. It started early in the season and it continued all the way through. They had difficulty handling. You know those type of things. Yeah, those are things that everybody works on. But the the solution is trying to try to stay out of third and ten, so they can't run those stunts. You know <laughs> those those stunts like that. They're they're, they're a problem. Uh, you know when you when you've got people third and four. Now you can run it or you know what I mean. Now those stunts are a disadvantage for the defense because they're not as good defending the run. I'm with you here. Uh, any uh, other thing defensively that you would point out? I've been through this. Uh, for Ohio State, uh, they they've got to play Notre Dame, so you get a pretty good look at them. But um, that's some of the uh, tail of the tape when at least where you're watching them in the spring. This is already getting down where I don't think that is uh, Stroud in there anymore. But maybe it is. They're running some two minute offense here. Yeah, you know, just in general, Denny, I, uh, I I I'm, I'm hoping that I'm right about their defense being focused and structured to, to beat the spread people. And Michigan is not – we have the ability to be spread, but we got the ability to come with three tight ends and six offensive linemen. I want to see how they're going to respond to that. But they are – they I didn't like seeing it, like I said, but they were smart enough to put some Michigan stuff into their offense, you know, to help prepare their defense. So I did see a dosage of that. Uh, which uh, I, I didn't like seeing because I, I was hoping they would be continue to be stupid and just run spread. What do you think of third base here? Uh, Coach Day, Ohio State did, if you we put the numbers up on the screen, you just go through a, a timeline of Ryan Day. They just gave him an extension recently. It gets nine and a half uh, annually. That you know puts him into – uh, midnight Mel Tucker territory. But if you just look at the timeline here, 2016 quarterback coach of the 49ers, offensive coordinator making 400,000 for Ohio State. Sounds pretty good, except when he, he gets an offer to go to Mississippi State. So the Buckeyes pay him 1.2. That's a huge jump. So him and uh, Greg Schiano are uh, the first million-dollar assistants. Then he takes over from Urban Meyer. They give him four or five. He goes undefeated in the regular season, goes to the playoffs. So they give him an extension and bump him up to five, seven, and six, seven. He was scheduled to make seven, six this year, but because of what you saw in the Big Ten from Mel Tucker, also what you saw 
at uh, at Penn State. I guess uh, with Jim Harbaugh as well. Uh, uh, Franklin uh, at Penn State. So they put him up to 9.5 uh, for Ryan. You know, Denny, I tell you, man, um, you, you got a great name for him. You call him third base, and that that, that Jim Harbaugh had the greatest. Uh, that, that's exactly what – when I view him, that's what I see, okay? Uh, you know, I see a guy that he didn't go out and build a program. Like, you know, you talk about Greg Schiano. Greg Schiano, he's proven in my eyes. He already built Rutgers. Now, he's got a huge challenge there. <laughs> I don't think Ryan Day could ever have a chance of building Rutgers like Schiano's going to have to do. But I'm I'm happy he's there. I want him to stay there. Because Jim Harbaugh is going to get him fired. That's what I want. That's the goal we're shooting for is to get him fired. And we got to do that by continuing to do the things that he we, we've been doing. Let's have the run game. You know, let's uh, let's hope for a little wet, windy day down there in, in uh, Columbus next uh, no, November. But I want him right there. And I don't the, the guy I don't want to face is, is the guy down in Cincinnati, the old former Buckeye, because I think he's a really, really good coach. Well, uh, Luke Fickle, yeah. Fickle, yeah. I'd rather I'd rather face uh, Ryan Day with that Ohio State talent than Luke Fickle with Ohio State talent. Hey, no. Danny, you ever you ever heard the expression "lions led by lambs" or "lambs led by lions"? Uh, variations, maybe. I <laughs> there, there you with, go. I don't Day. You know, it's it's interesting. Prior to the season, a season ago. The, the narrative for Ryan Day is that not only did he pick up where Urban Meyer left off, but he had put in some pro concepts and he had uh, supercharged the offense and the recruiting. And things were looking at, you know, if they could possibly be looking up from Urban Meyer, uh, they were. But, well, uh, I, you know, I don't know who uh, I don't know who decides the narrative, but let's see. I mean, it, it's not going to be crushed overnight. It's not going to be broken overnight. We got just as slowly as they were able to build it. We got to chip away at it slowly and people got to be patient, but we took a, uh, we took a big swing at a man and, and took a chunk off their armor and we got to keep doing it. We need somebody else in the big 10 to get them and nick them. And then if we get them if we start getting them, then, then you're going to see them, uh, you know, slowly break down, but I want them right. I want him there. I'm sorry, but that's the way I feel. I want I, I'd rather go against him. Well, you're gonna get your wish. And, and Michigan has not won uh back to back games against Ohio State since uh 99 2000. 2000 was uh down in the horseshoe. Drew Henson was the quarterback, and so uh, this team with an opportunity to go uh back to back, and they they Michigan's got a schedule. They've got the team. They got an offense. I think they got a Big Ten championship offense. I don't know if they got Michigan as a Big Ten championship defense right now. Maybe they do, but I, I think the special teams is Big Ten championship worthy. Are you talking about Jake Moody and Brad Robbins coming back, and you know the returners that they have, and the and the talent that they showed, and what you know how, how they coordinated the special teams? Uh, I would say that that's a Big Ten championship worthy, and I think the offense, knowing what we know. Uh, they could repeat as Joe Moore award winners. Uh, and you know, they got great pass catchers. The running backs are good. We got, you know, that you look at the quarterbacks we've talked about a lot. They got a big 10 championship type offense coming back. Danny, I, I believe our offense is solid. Yes. It's, it's good enough to win a big 10 champion. Our special teams are good enough. That it's proven. Okay. But, uh, who, whoever the hell they, they are. And we, you and I are part of they now. That's right. You. You and I are part of they. Who would have thought Michigan's defense would have been so damn good with a new defensive coordinator and it was darn good enough to win a Big Ten championship? Well, th this they right here, meaning me, I think our defense will be every bit capable uh, of winning a Big Ten championship. We got we got good players back uh, to replace uh, Hutchinson. We got good guys back that have played a lot of football. Good linebackers back to replace Ross. We got good players back. Second year in the system. Uh, we, we are ready, willing, and able. We got the talent. We got the coaches to compete. They got to make plays. They got to make plays like they did last year. But as far as they, this is the only they people need to be listening to is old Denny and Scarcelli over here. Because <laughs> we believe, at least I believe, we're good enough uh, to uh, – 
to get it done again. They just got to make plays. They got to be healthy. One thing, you know, again, we were healthy as heck last year, man. Let's knock on wood. We only lost one, you know, big time kid with uh, the receiver, but let's, you know, let's be healthy. But we're ready, willing, and able. We got the players, man. Yeah, that was a pretty pretty big loss. Hey, Antoine, uh, thanks a lot. Like you, Scar, he's got a few more points here. Let's go to him. Yes, I like our chances. I've seen the same weaknesses and had the same questions about that 425 defense, especially with Michigan's running scheme. It's bully ball time. Hey, yeah, our, our defense, Antoine's on time, man. He knows it. He, he, great minds think alike. He, he, he thinks he thinks like, oh, but yeah, I, what I, I really like our scheme, our defensive scheme, because we have the ability to stop everybody on our schedule. You know, we can stop and adjust. To, to stop Wisconsin and Iowa, and then we could stop the Ohio States and the Maryland's. And those are two totally different offenses. And we, we, with what we do, we have the ability to adjust and, and make little tweaks to stop both of them. And that's, that's a sign of a good defensive scheme. All right. Do you have, uh, let's see a breakdown of play here down at the goal line. Scar, what do you see? Well, let's, let's run. Let's let it run. Um, let's see what we get here. Yeah, see, that's the thing. The Buckeyes don't – they don't change much when they get in the red zone. And the goal line, they, they, they are what they are. They're four receivers. You know, Michigan is going to be different formations in there. So, they, they that's that's why they have trouble down there a little more because there's a small – the field squeezed up a little bit. So, that's one of the disadvantages of what they do. But they don't care. They just figure – we're going to be so good at, at running the spread with, you know, two receivers here, two receivers there, one back in the back. But we don't care. We're just going to be so good at it. And we're going to rep it so often that, uh, you know, it's what we do. You see, look, they're on the 30-yard 30, they're on the 30 yard line. Same formation as when they're on the 15-yard line. Well, a good place to stop it. An empty possession and missed field goal after uh, a sack down there. We'll give them one more play. And, you know, in slow motion. We're going to get an incomplete there. There's. Mr. Stroud, who I was listening to some scouts break down the uh, difference between uh, Stroud and Bryce Young, and I tell you, uh, if we're you're looking to we're we're looking towards the college football season, if, but if you're looking towards the NFL draft right now, the uh, the scouts have Stroud with a leg up. I mean, Bryce Young performed uh, admirably last year and everything else, but uh, Stroud's got the size. Uh, and the, uh, what you're looking at, he's a prototypical uh, NFL quarterback where Bryce Young, those are the the presumptive one and two QBs, maybe uh, one, two picks next year in the draft. Uh, Anderson from Alabama might have something to say about that, uh, their defensive end, depending on what teams need and everything. But we may be looking at uh, in Stroud, the, uh, the top quarterback. Heading in, he is looked at as the top pro quarterback and the presumptive number one pick. Uh, that's what uh, the rest of the Big Ten is going to have to deal with. Yeah, we'll see, man. You know, is he, um, he you know, throwing to those great receivers? Those are tough calls to make. Like we talked about evaluating quarterbacks. How many how many tight windows is he throwing in compared to other other quarterbacks? So, yeah, he's a good player, man. He, he can move and he's, he's accurate and, uh, and he's back. So we got to deal with him. Well, uh, Antoine, I, I tried to get all of your uh, your thoughts in there. We, we certainly do appreciate them. We do want to mention that if you like the Michigan talk here all day, all night on Maize and Blue Review, join up today, michigan.rivals.com. We were talking about, you know, uh, a great graduation gift. You got Father's Day coming up. My birthday's in June. A great gift for the Michigan fan in your life. And slide of a subscription to Maze and Blue Review. Everything you want to know about recruiting, right up to the minute, anything. NIL, constant conversation, you know, going on. We'd like to see you over there. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Leave uh, comments on if you're somebody that listens to the podcast. Uh, we're looking for those ratings. We're looking for those reviews, all of those kind of things. And uh, one of these days, uh, Scar is going to check out the, the TikTok page that I am in charge of. And I thought that it, I would just get it up and going a little bit, kind of a soft opening until football season. But I'm finding that I am putting more videos up uh, than I thought. 
And so it's uh, it's it's off and running. The M B R TikTok page, check it out. Yeah, hey, once we get into the season and we and we talk about the, the next opponent, I'll be able to break down some of the top things that a, a team does on both sides of the ball that I think we have to stop. And then, you know, we'll be able to look at game, the game that Michigan just played and look at things that uh, why why a play didn't work, why it worked, or why we stopped them or why we didn't stop them. Why, you know, we'll, we'll be able to break down some of that stuff to give our viewers a, a real intelligent wisdom breakdown good stuff we see people uh and 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 that'll do it scar we're going to continue the uh the after party for one minute or so on uh the clubhouse but we will talk to everybody tomorrow 